And joining me now is Hande Chilingir, who co-founded the tech startup Insider, which specializes in digital strategy, and Isan Elgin, a venture capitalist and technology strategist who founded Core Strategy. Hande, Isan, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you here. So the Turkish government has ambitions to make Istanbul a rival to Silicon Valley. So I want to start it with you. Sure. Give us an overall view on this project and similar ones like this one. And where does Turkey, especially Istanbul, stands when it comes to technology parks and research and development hubs? Actually, the government's plan has started 10 years ago, not it's uh, two years ago. So in the last two development plans of the Turkey, government focus on this technology, innovation and entrepreneurship. Based on that, they give the two different directions. One of them, the universities, with technology transfer offices and the Technopark. The second one, the, the corporate side, give them the grants and the, the, some other incentives. So if you look to Turkey, Turkey has a big population, has a big population, which is really good opportunity. And also the geographical position is very good. Yeah, everybody knows that it's a gateway to two sides. The other thing is that we have a good corporates, help them the entrepreneurs. So government sees the opportunity. If we, we catch the ideas of entrepreneurs, we impact the funds to come to Turkey. So now we have the big plan for to use it. So our government has lots of organizations to support the entrepreneurial ecosystem, and it's going very well right now. Mm -hmm. And the numbers are getting higher. 2010, we have a $12 million investments in Turkey in the startups, now more than $100 million. That's a significant so, rise then. Yeah. So, Hande, you were granted the most successful female entrepreneur award by Microsoft. Tell us about the entrepreneurial ecosystem in Turkey, especially when compared to other prominent countries. I think uh, we are improving for sure. We mm -hmm. are improving everything in terms of funding, in terms of the number of startups, as Isam mentioned, and in terms of the, I think, entrepreneurs' vision about the technology, about establishing new startups. I think we are improving the things. But I would say still we are like in the early days. Mm -hmm. So I think there are lots of things to do. But to me, the most important thing that we need to concentrate, focus on is actually improving our vision about being or creating more global companies. So we How are be, you going to do that? Well, I think just the I think biggest action to do that will be thinking about global from the very first day. Because, of, because most of the companies still have very limited approach about staying in Turkey only, which is a very limited market at the end of the day. And this is today when we look at the most improved markets in the world, like Silicon Valley, like Israel, they all manage to go outside of Silicon Valley and creating global companies, mm -hmm. same for Israel. So this is why I think from the very first day we should have this approach. This is the most important thing. But I think especially the entrepreneurs, in terms of having the courage, establishing their own companies, even after the graduation, now it becomes like much more stronger that to see that also they have this vision now. I think everything is going quite well, mm -hmm. and we are pretty much optimistic about that. Isa, you teach to help tech startups commercialize their innovative ideas. You also give lectures at universities mm -hmm. to encourage and prepare students for uh, the tech world, business world. How is that working out for you, and what are the most, most frequently asked questions? Actually, the, the this starting point is they're asking for their families. Families. Because, the, because they don't support them very strongly. Yeah. That's the cultural issue, actually. But now it's a little bit changing. I'm dealing with that to motivate the families also, help their yeah. kids be entrepreneurs. Let me understand, because according to Global Entrepreneurship Monitor, most European and North American countries show lower interest of attitudes towards entrepreneurship, whereas countries like Turkey, mm -hmm. Poland, and uh, mm -hmm. Netherlands over 80% uh, percent of people now speak highly of entrepreneurship. Yeah, but there is a misunderstanding about what that point. It? Educated person, educated kid, mm. their family they don't support. If you are not educated, they mm. are supporting them to be entrepreneur. But from entrepreneurship, we understand high impact entrepreneurship, which means that you can be go going to be a relation like a million dollars, hundred million dollars, five hundred million dollars like Hyundai. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to create an entrepreneur startups like this, you need to support, motivate the families of the educated kids. So you students. have to reach their families. That's right. 
So for a long time, business world, especially the uh, tech world, has been dominated by men uh, in Western and advanced countries. So Hande, as a successful female entrepreneur from Turkey, you don't quite fit the mold. Uh, tell us about what women are going through now and what advice uh, you would give younger women who want to break into this tech world and business world. I think first they need to see that life can be much more broader. It's not only about just saving money, your, you know, have a family, have some kids. Of course, those are all good things. But mm -hmm. at the same time, they should have the vision like thinking about life can be much more broader and they can change the things, they can influence the things. I think any woman or any man can do that. Mm -hmm. First, they should have a belief in that. This is the most important thing. Once they have a belief in that, there won't be any you know, understanding about, or let's say, any discrimination between men and women. They won't feel like in that way. So I think there will be no like, uh, you know, kind of disadvantage for the woman to do the things like establishing a new companies, tech companies. So I think they should only not to think about they are women and maybe they have limitations. They don't. Mm -hmm. Once you have overcome this feeling, then everything will be much more easier. The second thing I would suggest, and I'm only, I can only suggest because still I'm on the way, I don't see myself as a very successful entrepreneur. We are still learning too much. I think we need to look at the world much more, mm. reading, learning from the others. Those are the two only things that we can actually know more about the things. I think we should do that more, mm -hmm. especially females. Females. So Turkey has suffered from uh, brain drain uh, yeah. for decades. Uh, yeah. Smart, uh, brilliant children uh, chose to have a career abroad. Now the Turkish government uh, wants to revise this situation. How are we doing on that? Actually, it was good if you think like 2010 to 2007, 8, after this, some things happened, they started to go again out of the country. Mm -hmm. But it's not just the government's job, actually. It's a big corporate's job also. Mm -hmm. Make the life easier, make the you know, work life is better for them to stay here, not just the government. But government's dealing with that. They are creating some new grants for the entrepreneurial talents. Mm -hmm. So helping to the corporates do the R&Ds more and help to the creative people stay here. So, but it's challenging, of course. Okay. Why would foreign companies want to mm. invest in Turkey? Because we are a much more hungry country in terms of being successful. Okay. And, you know, once we, for example, sit on the table to do business, uh, we all know that we should actually do something different than the others. So, because of this level of hungerness in Turkey, they should invest in Turkey. We are much more passionate compared to many other ecosystems in the world. Mm -hmm. And we know that we have no other option than being successful. So our life depends on this. Will there be a unicorns from Turkey? Because if I'm not mistaken, you want uh, your company to be Turkey's maybe first unicorn. And how close you are to this target? I think we don't have a certain wish about that because being a unicorn is not an achievement. We don't see it as an achievement. I think it's a byproduct of going global and creating a successful company. So it's not a target, but it's a good indication in the world that Turkish ecosystem is also improving. Uh, so more unicorns definitely should be, but it shouldn't be the target. It should be the just byproduct of the success. Okay, Hande, Isan, I'm afraid we're out of time. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk. Appreciate it a lot.